This is EntreEd Talk, the podcast for entrepreneurial educators by entrepreneurial educators. We are your hosts, Toy Hirschman and Amber Ravenscroft. This podcast is created by the National Consortium for Entrepreneurship Education, or EntreEd for short. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Entre Ed Talk podcast. We are so excited and delighted today to be speaking with Pamela DeWall and Haley Romano. Uh, they are our good friends uh, from TREPS, and it's T-R-E-P with a dollar sign for the, for the S on the N. Um, Pamela and Haley founded TREPS Ed LLC. TREPS provides schools, parent associations, and community organization with TREPS, a comprehensive project-based entrepreneurship curriculum designed for students in grades four through eight. TREPS empowers children by providing a fun, project-based learning experience, which creatively integrates entrepreneurship education with the opportunity to apply business, academic, and life skills. They envision a world where all children are given the opportunity to acquire an entrepreneurial mindset in order to prepare them to succeed in our ever-changing economy. Pamela is a certified mathematics teacher who lives in New Jersey with her husband, son, and daughter. She holds a bachelor's degree in business from Montclair State University. Her desire to work with children motivated her to return to school to earn her elementary and mathematics teaching certificates from William Patterson University. And Haley is a certified K-8 teacher with a Bachelor of Arts degree in International Relations from Bucknell University and teaching certification from William Patterson University. She's taught elementary school for 12 years, specializing in language arts. Her favorite thing about TREPS is that it reaches kids who may not be that excited about school. That makes my heart smile. <laughs> and in her spare time, Haley is also a board game enthusiast enthusiast with a collection of over 500 games that I really need to see a picture of. <laughs> oh gosh. Okay. I'll get you one. Wow. <laughs> That's, so cool. That's so awesome. So uh, welcome, welcome, ladies. We are so thrilled to have you. I know we've been kind of following you guys for a while and just love the impact that you're making with so many students. So thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank you so much for having us. We're excited to be here. Yeah, this is this is fun. And um, and we just I know that our audience will really enjoy learning about TREPS and what you guys do, because it's just a really it's a really incredible program. So before we dive into all of that, uh, can you both just share a little more about your own personal, you know, career entrepreneurial journey and how you, how the two of you managed to come together and, and develop TREPS? Sure. Um, our journey was very much guided by the experiences of our own children um, who are, were best friends and are still very good friends today. Um, but back in 2006, when they were probably like third or fourth grade, my son Jack came to me begging for yet another Lego set. And in an effort to quiet him a little bit, I think I said, you sure, as long as you pay for it, you can get it. And um, of course, that didn't stop him. He asked, well, how am I going to do that? How am I going to pay for it? And it led to a discussion about ways he could possibly make money. And the PTA at his school was having sponsoring an upcoming vendor night, the type where um, adults rent tables and sell different things. And I suggested that he inquire about renting a table space at the event, uh, not knowing whether they would let him or not. And they did. And so then, of course, he had to decide what was he going to sell? What would make sense given the time of year? What could he actually do? Um, and he decided to make handmade wrapping paper, stamped wrapping paper to sell because it was um, right before the holidays. And when he started working in the garage making the wrapping paper, um, he saw just how much work was involved. And he was like starting to, to second guess whether he wanted to do this when I was like, well, you've made an investment now, like you borrowed money from me for the supplies. And um, at that time, he asked his friend Hans to join in with him as a partner to make it a little more fun and to divide up the work. And um, they launched their business at the, the event and they did really well. And Pamela and I are certified teachers at the time we were staying home to raise our children. Um, and we recognized the value of the experience for them, not only the lessons they learned about starting a business, but also how excited they were when they could see the why behind learning, right? So seeing um, that there was a reason that they had to learn the business math 
and seeing there was a reason that they needed to think about how they were going to write or speak persuasively. Um, so when we recognized the value of it, um, having some time on our hands and, and not being in the classroom, um, I guess we thought we had some energy to, to put forth into sharing this experience with more kids at their school. And that's when we went to the PTA again and asked if they would sponsor us in that effort, if they would be okay with us teaching an after school program where we taught kids how to launch a business. And then it ended with an actual marketplace where kids sold their items. From there, with their support, we actually discovered what was then called the Consortium for Entrepreneurship Education or your organization, Entre Ed. And we were really actually surprised that this whole community already existed of educators who valued the same things that we did. We were really fortunate to have people there who said, you, you can come to our forum, we'll give you a scholarship. And we went and we were really inspired by that. And at that time we came back and we started putting together the program to offer at our kids' school. When that was a huge success with over 800 people attending the first marketplace, the other schools started asking how they could get it at their school. And that's when we realized there was sort of a little market opportunity for us um, with our product. And that's when we went to other schools to pilot it and um, refine it before we started marketing it. Wow. That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's such a cool journey. It's, it's kind of funny. It's, you know, that you were being so entrepreneurial at the same time as promoting entrepreneurship. It's, it's really, it's really cool. Yeah. So can you, um, can you talk a little bit about what, how, how a school or even like in, inside of a school or within a school day or outside of a school in a, like a, in an after school program, how TREPS works, if a, you know, you know, explain like the curriculum and a little bit about how it rolls out in a school day. Sure. Um, so when a school decides to come on board with TREPS, they first purchase the TREPS startup kit. And that kit was designed to be very turnkey because as teachers, we knew very well um, how teachers are pulled in every direction. And so ease of use was very important to us. Um, at the time, a lot of parents were actually teaching our program as well as an after-school program because, and they didn't necessarily have teaching experience. So we really wanted it to be easy to use. Um, so schools purchased the kit, which includes the curriculum and all of the other resources needed to um, pull off the TREPS marketplace, like how to advertise for the event, how to do the layup of the room. Um, and there's also a book that helps lead the whole process. So these materials are purchased by the school. It's a one-time purchase, um, which also provides the school with a license to use the kit in one location. Um, the additional component or requirement is the purchase of a TREP student workbook for each student. The workbook we thought was very important um, so that if kids were out, they could see a recap of the lesson, um, that they could share the experience with their parents by bringing it home and showing what they learned each day. And um, so schools purchase annually the TREPS student workbook for each student. It's used both in the classroom, sometimes during fi a financial literacy block or a social studies block. Um, it's used as an after school program, it's all kinds of different ways. Um, we're seeing some schools have incorporated incorporated it with their STEM program as well. And it was also important for us for it to be sort of a short term program because we wanted that energy to, to stay high. Uh, we didn't want it to drag out for like half a year um, where kids might lose their excitement and motivation. And so our program is designed to run about eight weeks long and includes six workshops that cover topics like product development, um, finance, marketing, advertising, and sales. Um, it ends with a TREPS marketplace, um, as we mentioned already, where the kids launch their business before the community at the school um, for a, a window of two or two and a half hours um, for a real profit or loss. The kid, I mean, obviously, if you have a marketplace, there's a lot of different products being developed, right? So how do the students decide what they're going to do and, and then get, I'm assuming that they're, they're, some of them work in teams. So how do they figure that out? Is that part of the curriculum or do they, 
Cause that's a re- that's, I love that cause it's really unstructured and there's, there's no guarantee of, uh, you know, success, I mean, success and, and, uh, you know, successful, profitable business and, and, and one that's not neither one of those things is, uh, you know, just if it's, well, it might not be, it's not really a failure because they've learned yeah, yeah, information. Um, but anyway, I'm just curious as how, how the kids, because of it's fourth through eighth grade, how they how they figure that out, how they come together as a team and how they decide what they're going to do. There are, I mean, we guide them through in the uh, student workbook. There are pages that help them brainstorm ideas and think about it. And we give them a lot of prompts to let them think about different things. Everything has changed so greatly over the years. You know, we've been doing this now for about 15 years. And when this program started, the internet was not what it is today, right? So now they have, you know, they can go on Etsy, they can go on Pinterest, they can go to our Facebook page and look through, you know, as many marketplaces as we can. We create albums for with the kids standing there with their products so they can look through it. Maybe one of those products will prompt an idea for them or inspire them. So there's plenty of ways to find, um, you know, to find product ideas. Initially, when it first started, we used to tell them to just walk through like the home improvement store and look through the bins and see if something, you know, sparks an an idea for you or go through the craft store, you know, like, and it's really evolved quite a bit because there, there's such a wealth of ideas, um, you know, online now. I like, I like the low tech version. I think, (laughs) I think that's a a good one. You're right. You can like pick stuff up that that's probably the most valuable for kids to do that and see what, you know, see what resonates with them or what they like. That's just, I love that idea because a lot of programs, even in entrepreneurship, there's still that like the defined kind of outcome and even def- like even de- defined problem or opportunity and and it's it, it's that's not real life you know right. you're you're adding that level of ambiguity and like kind of this uncertain outcome really for for kids that they don't get in traditional classes which is like it's life <laughs> you know right. but we don't teach it so much like that so that's that's really cool We also encourage them to think about things that they can get free for some reason, like maybe they're going to use recycled products, or maybe they have someone in their family that has a business that has a byproduct that gets thrown away. Maybe they could use that and create a product with that. We're trying to give them the idea of being a little scrappy and thinking about how to limit their expenses so that it's a bit of a safer bet for them and that they have a better chance of making a profit. Because that first business, that's a tall order to make a profit. Right. Yeah. And I mean, and that's what, again, that's what you have to do. I mean, you're, you're teaching them resourcefulness, you know, and they're not, they're not asking their dad to buy a case of chocolate bars that they're going to resell. Yeah, <laughs> they're actually, they actually have to use, uh, and, and that's, uh, again, that's such a, such an amazing mindset to develop. And I just, that's, that's so cool. I, I just, I love, I love what you guys are doing. It's such a, it's, creative and design-based thinking and it's it's all of these amazing things and it does give kids that that why you know we, we, we hear it all the time as educators why do I need this and most of the time we can't even answer that question right yeah, as a math teacher I can tell you I've heard that more than once <laughs> I know I was a math teacher too it was <laughs> like um why because uh oh well let's talk about something else <laughs> Yeah. And then as far as the partnership aspect of it, we do have students who join team, join forces with um, a classmate to create partnerships. And we actually include in our workbook, a partnership agreement so that they can sign that, how the work will be divided, how the expenses will be divided, how the profits and or losses would be shared. Um, if there was a situation where they couldn't agree, um, they write down the name of a mediator to help work through that. And we do um, go through with them all of the, the benefits or maybe the drawbacks of being in a partnership, um, all the things they should consider before they make that decision, you know, whether you really want to share your profits or whether you want to share the decision making or not, um, whether your friend is dependable and trustworthy. So <laughs> we go through all that, too, before they make that decision. Wow. That's I didn't realize that that's that's. That's really neat. I've not 
seen, I don't think I've seen any program that really gets into that idea, but I mean, how many kids would get together with their buddy and then find out, oh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be and what a great lesson to, to, to get, you know, that's, that's, that's so cool. Well, um, I think that's the benefit of, uh, you know, of us being around for so long, we've gotten a lot of feedback from our teachers. And then in the next round of edits, we include that in the kit. So at this point, it is incredibly detailed and it really covers all the bases so that the teacher doesn't have to create a policy out of nowhere. You know, the, everything is there and waiting for them. That's, that's awesome. And I bet teachers really appreciate that. <laughs> they do. Get really they, positive don't have, they don't have to figure out where to start it, to, you know, cause it's, it would seem overwhelming, I think, to do something so to big in a school and, but to have that support, it's kind of like when we scaffold stuff, you know, scaffold stuff for, for kids. It, it's really, that's really helpful. Wow. Um, so, you know, we, Entre Ed, we, we love the idea of how entrepreneurship inspires, you know, student personal agency and self-efficacy. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of that in, in through track. Could you share like maybe one or two of your favorite? Yeah. So you want to hear, you know, maybe a nice story about someone who's, who's gone far with this? Yeah. If you have, if you have a, a, a favorite story or two, that would be incredible. Or, you know, an epic fail. I, I'm happy <laughs> to hear either, either thing because it's all part of an entrepreneurial journey, you know? <laughs> Yeah, and, and you know, both Haley and I love attending the marketplaces. At this point, we're in over 150 schools, so we can't get to the mall. And we actually keep track and monitor what year we were there last. So we make sure we're not forgetting anybody and try to get back to them as often as possible. So we get to meet a lot of the kids and we get to speak with their parents. And, you know, just hearing the story about the kid who's painfully shy, but just delivered this beautiful sales pitch to me, a stranger. You know, that kind of stuff is is really amazing. And you're right. You do have kids that aren't successful that first year. And sometimes I'm lucky enough that I meet them their second year doing the program. And they'll tell me, oh, well, last year, you know, I did this. And I didn't realize that there were so few people that share my love of, you know, whatever it was. And so it didn't have enough of an appeal at the marketplace. And they learned that lesson and applied it. And now they had a, a product that was, um, you know, appealing to a wide variety of people and they were very successful. So it is really nice to get to hear those stories. Um, there was uh, one girl that came to mind right when, uh, when you brought this up. You know, she grew up in the town of Bloomingdale in New Jersey. Her school is unique in that it's a middle school, but it runs all the way from fifth to eighth. And so the kids in her school are able to do treps for four years in a row, which is not, not common. Usually it's two or three years max. So the first year she did the program, I happened to attend the marketplace and she had created button bracelets. So they were bracelets where um, elastic string had gone through the buttons that would make them, you know, into a bracelet. And she had created beautiful designs that were in different color families. And as a teacher, you're always trying to accessorize. So I remember I purchased from her, like all these autumn shades of like orange and browns and blacks. And I still own and loved, love this bracelet. And then the second year I happened to go back and I did remember her and I went up and, and reintroduced myself and spoke with her a little bit, but her stand had really changed. She still had the uh, button bracelets, but in addition, she had gotten guitar picks and created chokers out of guitar picks on like a black string. And I remember being surprised and thinking, well, I'm surprised she didn't stick with the button theme and make earrings or chokers or something like that with the buttons. So I asked her about that and she said, well, the thing that I didn't like about the buttons was it really just appealed to the girls. So there were no boys stopping by at all. They all just went right past. So I really wanted something that the boys would like. And optimally, if I could have the girls like it as well, that was great. So she created these guitar pick chokers and they were a big hit. And she continued with this business every year. Her business was called um, Abby Lou Jewelry or Abby Lou Designs maybe. Anyway, so she, she kept going. And the third year, she added guitar pick earrings. And then the fourth year was the best. She, um, 
she found a way to print on the guitar picks with the uh, the town, like the school's motto, right? So they were the bulldogs. So she printed a little picture of a bulldog um, with the town name on it. And, and she had the whole line there that you could buy the different things with these guitar picks that had been printed with their mascot. And that was all great. And she did very well in eighth grade. And then she graduated and didn't want to stop. And of course, you know, the, the program's only offered through the middle school level. And she did get involved in DECA at the high school level, but she really wanted to keep her business alive. So she started selling at local craft fairs and like holiday vendor markets and things like that. And she did very well running her business all the way through high school. Oh. And um, I do get to hear from her mother because she was one of my spotlight kids. So she had written um, about her experience when she was young. And so her mom still has my email address and is wonderful about keeping uh, us posted. And then we get to put that in the Treps on Track newsletter for our readers. And we learned that she went to college and was a marketing major. She's probably, I think she's graduating this May. Um, her sophomore year, she did a Kickstarter to raise funds for uh, a website for her new business, which is called Guppy Style. And it is incredibly cool. So her website is now up and um, you can see pictures of her and her friends on a beach wearing these t-shirts, which is what Guppy Style uh, sells. But the t-shirts are cool because they have woven into the fabric um, recycled plastic, like water bottle plastic. Oh, is wow. in every t-shirt and um, so part of the profits from her business also goes to cleaning oceans of some of these plastics and things that are uh, currently a problem. So it, it's really exciting to see what happens when you teach a kid when they're so young that they are capable and that they can make a difference, you know, and that there's, there's nothing that's, that's too hard if you break it down into its steps. So um we're really proud of her. I have my own t-shirt. <laughs> I have my own Guppy style t-shirt, of course. That's um, awesome. But, you know, she's, she's not the only success story. I'm hearing more and more about, you know, kids continuing their businesses. Um, there was a boy who had uh, spun wood uh, pens at the last marketplace or at one of the marketplaces. He was um, at a school uh, in, in Rockaway town. And, um, and he had created these things and he had to rent this special, special lathe or go to where the lathe was to use it. And he learned all about these exotic woods and the nature of those woods, what was harder, really incredible. And so, you know, he just wrote me recently to ask, okay, so now I've had the marketplace. I loved it. What do I do next? How do I continue my business? Wow. So, wow. That's, and think of the learning I mean, beyond the mindsets and, and the entrepreneurship kind of, but just that deeper learning about the, the wood and how you would work with that. And like, there's so many, and the lathe, like the math and the, the technical skills, everything. That's just, that's, I mean, that's what we want, right? We want kids to get excited about something and then they can take a deep dive and, and in the in the process of that deep dive, they learn so much more, you know, just, and they, and they're motivated. It's just, that's so cool. Yeah. So. There's a lot of kids that learn, you know, sort of uh, skills that have kind of gotten lost as well. You know, um, we have a lot of people who, you know, we've had kids take, um, you know, how when the kids do sports and stuff, when they're little, they all get like team t-shirts. And then over the years, you know, kids' drawers are filled with these uh -huh. when they play soccer, <laughs> when they play basketball, you know. Um, so we've seen at marketplaces where they take those t-shirts and they're already sewn on two of the sides and they just sew across, you know, the bottom, they stuff it, and then they sew across the top. And they've made these adorable pillows that say, you know, whatever, West Milford soccer or, you know, whatever it is for your town. Um, and then that's a really fun thing that, you know, they're recycling something. And a lot of those kids don't have an opportunity to sew until something like this comes yeah. up. Do we and they have anymore? <laughs> or a grandparent uh, who can teach them. Um, so there's a lot of skills like that, you know, crocheting, knitting, um, woodworking, a lot of things like that, you know, goes hand in hand with sort of the maker movement, uh, where the kids are learning to use their hands and gaining confidence with that. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. I mean, and it's just, they would not have... They would not have picked up that skill otherwise, likely, 
unless they had, again, the why, the reason they're doing it, you know, that's so, that's incredible. What I think is, is, is interesting, and maybe you could speak to this uh, a little bit, is that generally when, especially when, when we go into schools and we say the word entrepreneurship, most teachers are like, wait, that's for, that's for high school business ed. That's not for me. I'm a fifth grade teacher or I'm a middle school teacher, you know, and, and, and it does take a little bit of convincing and we, we generally have success with that, but that word is kind of in the way sometimes, and you don't see as many entrepreneurship education types of programming and activities and things at the elementary and middle school levels. So I wonder if you have some experience with, um, you know, how do you, how do you go find great schools? And, and when you don't know you're walking in cold, you know, how do you talk to teachers about this whole, this whole experience through TREPS? Yeah. Okay. Um, so, you know, when we first started, um, we, we relied on friends and family to and make introductions for us. And we actually would go to parent association meetings and, um, and try to get the energy started there, which was really wonderful. And that gave us, you know, our pilot schools and got us started. Since then, the program has really grown very organically. Um, you know, it was this little circle initially, and the circle just keeps growing and growing. And it's about exposure. Um, the nice thing about this experience is that it ends with this large scale marketplace. So that means that people are going to hear, cousins are going to go parents are going to go and see how amazing it is. And then, you know, maybe they're a teacher or an administrator at another school. So then they want to bring it to their school, or maybe they're a teacher at the school and they're not even involved with the program, but of course they're going to go to the marketplace because the kids are nonstop talking about it. Mm -hmm. um, so they show up at the marketplace, they're wowed by it. And now they're thinking about their own kids. And so, you know, they're asking us to get in touch with that school so that we can bring it there. So that's really how the program has grown, you know, to the number of schools uh, that it has so far. The other thing is that the teachers who are involved become really like ambassadors for the program because, you know, as teachers, we all got into education because we wanted to make a difference. We wanted to inspire someone. We wanted to make these important connections with the kids that would impact their futures, right? And when you're in the day-to-day -day of teaching, sometimes you wonder how much you're doing that and, and you want to reconnect with that, you know, more idealistic you that got into education. And so I think with programs like TREPS that you feel like you really are connecting with these kids, that you're making a difference, it really inspires those teachers and they share that with everyone that they speak with, which is really wonderful for us. That's how we hear a lot. Um, you know, we hear back from new people that they were at a conference or they were at a workshop and they happen to have someone sitting next to them who told them about it. And the same is true with um, uh, administrators, um, that they're sharing the information with other administrators about the success they've seen at their school. And, uh, and then we get a call from, from you know, the next, the next school out in that circle. That's great. I mean, it shows it's a testament to how, how powerful the program is and and what these kids are experiencing i mean it's just they we've seen we've seen in schools that that do that do different entrepreneurial interventions and things that it it changes the culture of a school it makes i mean it, it, it you know even though that might be one part of their day it's just it's enough of an inspiration that it carries them through that, you know, things that might be maybe not as fun for them or excite, you know, get them excited about. And I know in your bio, you talked about how, um, you know, entrepreneurship is a lot of times inspiring and motivating for kids who might not have a great school experience. And that's something we, we talk to teachers about all the time, because, it, you know, you've got these kids, there's unfortunately some kids that academically or for whatever reason, school is just, you know, it's not just bad. It's like, it's, it's the worst. And it's this constant stream of feeling, you know, bad about yourself. And then when you, sometimes you're going to get this entrepreneurship experience and some of those kids are the ones that are the most successful. And it's, it's, I mean, you know, it's really great to see. And I know that all teachers and administrators want that 
for their school. I mean, if you don't, then you really not do not need to be a teacher or an administrator. Right. If you don't want your kids to enjoy school, at least on some level, then something is fundamentally wrong. But yeah, and, and in fact, I, I wanted to share, I've, I've met with some of your teachers organically, at, actually at our, our conference, and you are not kidding. They are so excited about the program and moving it forward and keeping it going. And I mean, I literally was almost tackled by one of your teachers. <laughs> <laughs> you have to see this. You know, it was just, it's really, really great. What if, if I am a teacher right now and I'm listening to this, or if I'm a, a principal or even a parent, what might I do first if I wanted to start this or something like this in my school or my kid's school? Um, well, you can, uh, you, you, you have the decision to make. Do you want to, you know, create this from scratch, um, you know, which is what we did with TREPS, um, which means, you know, doing your research. And, um, and as Haley said, we went to the consortium and we had that amazing experience. Um, so you can do that if you're looking for a way to do that that's a little easier. You can reach out to us and we can guide you through um, exactly how, how you do that. Um, so do you want contact information or would this be? Well, we usually do contact information at, at the end. I just was like, okay. if I, if I was a, like, I, I mean, I guess we could reach out to you if I'm a parent or if I'm a teacher. Um, but I was kind of thinking like, you know, what, what would the first step be? Would we oh, okay. buy the kit sure. or would we, you know, how, how does that process look? Let's say, let's say, let's put it, say I'm a, I'm a fifth grade teacher and I'm like, this sounds awesome. What do I do next? Reach out to us either through the website or Facebook, something like that. And uh, Pamela usually takes care of most uh, sales and marketing calls. Um, so it would lead to a conversation or, or if you're close enough to a visit to your school where we could talk about it further and show you the materials uh, firsthand. And, um, and then, of course, there's decisions to be made. You want to be able to get more people on board. Um, you would need to get your principal in agreement. You'd need to figure out um, how you're going to fund your program. Um, we have a lot of different options for that. Uh, we just had a school last night in Union, New Jersey. Um, it was their first TREPS marketplace. And the teacher there, who was the lead teacher, was incredible. She spent the last few weeks of August before school started going out to all of the local businesses. And, and she even had like one of those big checks um, seeking donations um, to support the program. And um, she did an incredible job with that. She wasn't going to wait for it to be approved, but you know, in a school budget, she was just gonna go get it. And um, so discussing funding options um, would be a good next step. Um, and putting together a team. Um, our team for TREPS usually, we say that ideally, um, we like to have four people on the team, um, the team leader, the publicity person, um, the marketplace person, and the workshop facilitator. Um, but those positions are often combined as well um, because we know people, sometimes it's hard to uh, get the res human resources necessary. But uh, we talk about that with you. We go through all the different options so that we can make it as easy as possible for you to get that team together, get the funding, and get started. And the good news is it's it's a pretty inexpensive program, um, you know, if you compare it to what else is out, out there. Uh, and it really brings in a lot of different kids in your school. So there's a lot of different people that can be involved. And as much as, you know, we talk about the different roles, you know, there are many elementary schools where it's one person really putting on the different hats to get everything done. But we do have middle schools where you know, there are so many kids involved that, you know, there happen to be four teachers because, you know, that's the only way you can, you know, get the word out to that many kids and teach them. Excellent. So, yeah, if you reach out to us, you know, uh, which will give you contact information at the end, um, we can send you information. We have a lot of, you know, uh, PDFs that, that speak to um, project-based learning and um, the, the career standards that we need and all the different things uh, to, to let you understand the benefits of the program a little bit better. Wonderful. So, and I, I wanted to, you kind of touched on this before, but you guys have seen the program work both as an after school activity or as a, as a separate kind of part of the school day and then, all, or, or also within the school. So um, can you just share a little bit about 
those two, mo I mean, I talked about it being in different classes, but kind of a little bit about how the structure of those two models might work. Cause there might be parent teacher organizations, like you said, that might think about starting an after school program for something like this. So if, if it's done after school, it's if this is a very structured program. So there's we've removed all the guesswork. Uh, it's broken down into workshops that happen after school. Um, if it's done during school, then sometimes those workshops need to be broken up into uh, parts just to fit within the span of a period. Um, but it's it's a lot of fun when it's done uh, in either environment because the workshops are extremely hands on. They're very engaging. Uh, the kids are, you know, in business challenges from the very first day. They're being expected to apply the business skills that we're teaching them uh, to a challenge, and then they have to sort of perform in front of everybody. So there's a lot of different skills uh, that are touched on um, that are, you know, easily recognizable to parents or teachers as being really valuable to the kids. Um, those communication skills, you know, being one of them. So if a, if a parent is interested, they can reach out to us. It doesn't need to be a teacher or an administrator. And we can um, start a conversation with them at first if they're more comfortable with that. And we can include uh, the school administration at a later point once they're sure that they're ready to move forward. And we can guide you through you know, every step of the way. Uh, it's pretty much after 15 years, we really understand how to make sure every school is successful from year one. Awesome. That was that question had a little a little bit of selfishness in it because I'm sitting here. <laughs> I spoke with you guys the other day too, and I'm sitting here like, how do I get this in my kids' school? <laughs> how Don't do I you worry? So you know how do you get this in your kids' school? We have a we have a really one thing we have is really really great at our school is a. Um, my, my children's school who are um, audience members have heard me talk about <laughs> like, that we have a really strong PTA. And I, when you said, I was like, oh, wait, I wonder if I could do something like that, because that would be, that would be really, really fun. So this, I mean, I just, I love the idea of this program and I love the fact it's just different than a lot of, there's not a lot of good resources, first of all, for, especially for younger kids in, in, entrepreneurship education. I know that's starting to change a little bit, but just the fact that that TREPS seems to be just different than what else is out there because it is you really it's really student driven. And then you're you're scaffolding in those those big ideas, those big business and, and entrepreneurship principles, but almost like they don't notice <laughs> because because they, they're learning them, but they're not but they're not going, okay, now we're gonna learn accounting. It's part of their process to get to the end. And that's that process is motivating and they're persevering and they're kind of secretly learning all of these amazingly big principles that you usually don't see until high school if you elect to take a class in high school that right. focuses on that. So that's that's what's really, I just think, very powerful about what you guys are doing. Aww, so, thank you. I'm just glad you've been able to share this with, with our audience. And we like, Amber gets mad at me because we, but she's not on today because she had a, had something come up, but we, <laughs> I, I'm a little bit long-winded and I don't like to stop talking. So, um, but if we do try to keep this around 45 minutes or so, so we probably should wrap up, but I'm sure there are many, many more things to explore with you all. And for our audience, um, we'll, I'll have you guys give our audience your contact information, but they also have a great newsletter, just FYI. I've been getting it for a little while and you can see the impact that they're having uh, through this newsletter, but also there's just some amazing information in there as well that if you're an educator thinking about, thinking about, you know, looking into entrepreneurship and how that can benefit your students. This is, it's a great resource. So we appreciate all of that. And um, so why don't you tell everybody uh, how they can get in touch with you and learn more about what you're doing and learn more about TREPS with a dollar sign at the end. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Koi. So the, the website is trepsed.com. So it's T-R-E-P-S-E-D.com, like education. Um, and when you go on the website, there is a, um, in the gold bar, I believe it, it says uh, newsletter and you can go and you can see all of our, it's the archive of all of our past 
newsletters and you can also subscribe to our newsletter right there. You will find all kinds of goodies on our website um, and you can always contact us through the forms on there if, if you can't find us any other way. Um, you can, through email, you can get us at info at trepsed.com. Um, on Facebook, we're also trepsed, like treps education. I think Instagram, we're trepsedu, right, Hale? Yeah, I think that covers it all, right? Wow, you guys got your social media on. <laughs> we <laughs> we <try. laughs> I love it. Awesome. Well, ladies, thank you so much for being here today. I, I'm just appreciative of what you're doing to inspire kids and make a difference. It's, it's really incredible. And it just, it warms my heart to meet and, and, and be in a community with, with people like you that are just doing things. I, I had the same experience when I, when I first found out about Entre Ed and started working, I was like, oh, here's my people. <laughs> this is great. But there, I just love that we're hopefully with the podcast and, and with what you're doing, that we're, we're building this great community and ecosystem around entrepreneurship education. So I thank you for your work. Uh, it really is truly amazing. Oh, thank you so much yeah. for having us on. We will forever be indebted to Entre Ed because of that first experience with the consortium that was really the inspiration, you know, for, for so much of what's inside TREPS. You know, I remember walking around that conference with Haley and the two of us were just, just, you know, the ideas just were everywhere to us because there was so, there was so much energy in that event. So we look forward to coming back to it again soon. And, um, and we thank you for all you're doing to, um, you know, to inspire people, people all around the country to uh, get this experience in more kids' hands and, uh, and, you know, get their minds wrapped around what, what they're capable of. Well, we appreciate that. And we definitely need you at the forum. We'll talk offline about that. I think I have another plan for you guys. <laughs> But well, thank you so much. And again, ladies, have, have a wonderful rest of your day. And thanks again. Thank you. Thanks so much for having us.